For the 60th problem on this first ACT practice test, the sides of an acute triangle measure 14, 18, and 20 centimeters respectively. Which of the following equations, when solved for theta, gives the measure of the smallest angle of the triangle? And as a note, for any triangle with side lengths of lowercase a, b, and c, that are opposite angles capital A, B, and C, respectively, then we have here, this is the law of sines. So let me write that. The law of sines is the equation here on the left, this one underlined in green. And this next equation here, underlined in orange, this is called the law of cosines. So let me draw out kind of exactly what they mean by this note here. So you'll use the law of sines or the law of cosines when you essentially have some random triangle where you don't have a right angle. And if we were to call these side lengths A, B, and C, then the angles with the capital letters would just be opposite their lowercase letters. So the angle A would be opposite this side length A. So it'd be right here. This angle would be capital B since it is opposite lowercase b. And this angle here would be C. Now the hardest part of the law of sines or the law of cosines is determining which one to use in different cases. And in general, the law of sines, you can kind of see it, uses angles more than side lengths, whereas the law of cosines uses side lengths and only has this one angle in it here. Though one case where you will use the law of cosines when you do have an angle would be the case of an included angle. So if you had side C and you knew side B as well, and you also knew angle A, then you can use the law of cosines to find this missing side length, side lowercase a. So that would be the one scenario where you'll use the law of cosines when you have an angle or when you're trying to find an angle. But in general, when you know one or more of the angles, you will likely use the law of sines. So going back to our particular problem, we have a triangle with side lengths 14, 18, and 20 centimeters, and we're trying to find what the smallest angle of the triangle is. And anytime you know all three of the side lengths, you can assume you're going to use the law of cosines. So let's draw this triangle out. And we can label all of our sides now. We know the longest is 20 centimeters, the next longest is 18, and the smallest is 14. And the smallest angle will always be opposite the shortest side length. So the smallest angle would be opposite this side length of 14 centimeters, since it's the smallest. And we can call this angle here theta. So like I said, because we know all three of the side lengths, we'll have to use the law of cosines. So we're trying to find our missing angle theta, which since there's only one angle in this equation, that would have to be uppercase C, which makes the side opposite it lowercase C. So 14 is C. And then for A and B, it doesn't really matter what you choose. We can call this A and we can call this B, or you can make it vice versa. It really makes no difference. But it is very important which side length we denote as lowercase C because that's the one opposite the angle we're trying to solve for. So at this point, all we have to do is just plug in our numbers into the equation. So let's clear a little room and go ahead and do that. So we're plugging into the equation c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2 times a times b times the cosine of uppercase c. So we know that c is just 14. So we have 14 squared. a we've called 18. So we have 18 squared plus b squared, which is 20 squared, and then minus 2 times 18, which is a, times 20, which is b, and times the cosine of our angle that we're looking for, which we've called theta. So this is the equation that we would use to solve for theta. 
but our particular problem doesn't actually ask us to find theta, it just really asks us which equation we're going to use. And since only one equation looks like this, choice letter J, we know that this is the correct answer.